Hello, everybody. Welcome to block one of the chicken salad quilt. Um, this is the Lori Holt chicken salad pattern, and I'm doing a sew along with it. Um, please know that everything that is in here related to Lori Holt and the chicken salad pattern is copyrighted by Riley Blake Designs for 2022. Shows it right here. And I have put my chicken salad together into a notebook. And as you can see, it's already well worn. We haven't even really got started good yet. What I've got in here is quite a few things um, that are helpful for me. I printed out the entire sew along guy, and then I put things in here in sheet protectors. I did borrow, thank you very much, a free download from Power Tools with Thread, who is uh, Becky has already gone through and done all of the figuring on what colors and what shapes need to be cut for this. I recommend that you go over to Power Tools with Thread video and download that. I will also be linking um, that video in my description in the show notes for this. And then we're gonna go through and follow the pattern. There is the entire setup in here, including what the shapes are what your layout guide is. And then there's some embroidery that needs to be done on some of these blocks. So I put those embroidery files in here. And then of course, pictures. So you can see what Lori Holt's vision was for these chickens. Mine will not match exactly because I don't have all of the cookbook fabric. There's a place for notes. And then back here, I have given myself a place to put all of my so simple shapes in. This quilt does require the so simple shapes. I put mine in baseball card holders. And what I'm doing is for each one, as I get ready to make the block, I'll pull out the pieces that I need. This is a so simple shape. And this is for one of the combs on the chicken. So I've got that in there. And that's the last item, except that I do have, um, an item already drawn out for us. Now, Lori Holt normally uses sew-in interfacing whenever she does these blocks. I am not a fan of sew-in interfacing, mostly because when you sew it together, um, you have to then clip it and turn it out. And I have arthritis in my hands pretty badly. So clipping and turning is not something that I do well. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you today how to do this using fusible interfacing. I've done a couple of Lori's quilts with fusible interfacing and it worked really well. I'm going to bring you down here to my work table and show you what I've got laid out. First off, the fusible that I'm using is Heat and Bond Light. It's in a purple package. I'm going to make sure you can see that. Heat and bond light. If you get the red package, you cannot sew through it. So you for certain want to get the purple package. And I have a package that I got off Amazon for about eight dollars. Um, five and a quarter yards, which is 4.8 meters. I will try to give measurements in Imperial. I don't know the metric measurements and they're not on my map. So it's really hard to make those happen. I wanted to show you that for this particular chicken, which is Hattie, she's the first one in the sew along guide. I have already cut out most of the pieces that I need. I've got the chicken, I've got the baby chick, I've got the wing for her. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use this heat and bond light. Now heat and bond has two sides. One side is kind of shiny and a little bumpy, and the other side feels just like a sheet of paper. It's smooth and it's papery. That's because it is paper. And what we're gonna do with our, our So Simple Shapes is I am going to lay them down here, and I want to put them on top of the paper side of the heat and bond light, but I wanna turn them over so they are reversed because when you do it this way, with this, this is probably not the best example because it's symmetrical. But if you want to make sure that your chicken comes up the right way around, 
you need to turn it over upside down. And I'm going to leave a little room around this. Not around the um, pattern that I'm tracing, but around it when I cut out. So I don't want to put these shapes right up against each other. You don't want to do that. You want to give yourself a little bit of room in between them. So that when you iron these on the back of your fabric, um, that you are getting the entire piece that's going to be adhered, covered with the heat and bond light paper. M7 is reversible. So I just did it wrong side up. And then M23 is an egg or a wing for the little bird, sorry. And I do have a little extra room over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace this one over here. It won't be too close to the other one. I do wanna turn it over though. So I wanna make sure that I remind myself to always cut these reversed. And then I'm just gonna trace around it. You can trace on the back of Heat and Bond with a pen, a pencil, anything that works for you. Um, I don't recommend a marker because a marker might not be um, close enough to the pattern to be able to do that. And then I know that these pieces are supposed to be various colors. The other thing I wanna make sure you know to do is to write the number of the pattern piece on here. You may think, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and apply all this today. I won't forget. Take my word for it. Go ahead and write the number of the pattern piece on there. Because best laid plans. And if you drop everything on the floor, you might run into issues. I'm just gonna take my scissors here and I'm gonna cut the part off that I've drawn on. And then I'm going to cut around the shapes. Get that one a little bit close by the time I drew it. And then this fabric doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. So it's not gonna make a big difference if I put it on the wrong side of the fabric. But this one does have a right side or a wrong side. Not sure if you can see that pink. You wanna make sure that you apply your heat and bond to the wrong side of the fabric, like this. So it goes on the back. I'm gonna trim this little piece up just a little bit more because I don't wanna get this heat and bond onto uh, my wool mat that I'm gonna iron with. And let's do a little ironing here. Let me bring over the wool mat and the iron. Thank goodness for cordless irons, huh guys? So here's my wool mat. And here are my three pieces. Now you need to follow the directions for any heat and bond that you're using. Um, mine says that I need to apply heat for a certain number of seconds. I believe that it's seven or 10. <clears throat> and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I've got my iron nice and hot. And I'm gonna make sure that the glue side is down to my fabric. You do not want this getting stuck to the bottom of your iron. Now you don't have to wiggle the iron. You can just let it sit there, but you don't wanna leave it on there too long because it'll burn the glue up and it won't stick. That kind of defeats the purpose. And this is why I only did the small pieces. I didn't want to bore you guys while you sat here and had to listen to me or watch me put all the big pieces together. Now that we've got these all put together, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to take that little piece of fabric off. They're still hot. I want to kind of wait until they're cooled off a little bit before I start trimming them. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right on the line. Since I used the pencil, it's a little bit bigger than the pieces. That one's cooled off enough now. And I'm just going to take my little embroidery scissors. You can use your bigger scissors if you have enough control to do that. With my hands, the little embroidery scissors work better. It takes just a couple of seconds to trim it. Doesn't have to be super duper crazy exact, but you do want to be very close if you can. And I'm not using the um, cookbook fabrics, but I do have a good bit of Lori Holt fabric. And uh, from leftover from making another quilt, stuff that I've collected. All of that is going into this quilt probably, or as much of that as I can put in. So don't be surprised if you see some other items that uh, you've seen elsewhere. And I usually try to do the parts that are bigger and easier to cut first. You could actually cut this part with a big pair of scissors and then just use the small ones to get down and close. That is absolutely your prerogative. I'm trying to show ways to make it easier for people who have difficulty with cutting small things or and you notice that I'm not moving my scissors. I'm moving the fabric. And as much as possible, I'm just using the sharpness of the scissors to cut this. All right, so now we've got those trimmed out. This is all scrap. Um, that's a fairly big piece, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw this away. That's a piece of sheet that I used for something. And then I'm gonna pull the rest of my pieces up here. And I have moved all of my pattern pieces out of my way so that I don't accidentally mess something up there. Now I pre-cut all of my back on my background pieces. Lori Holt has got uh, printed fabric that she uses for the background on this. I'm using muslin that I got from Marshall's Dry Goods. I really like this muslin. And if I want to put SF 101 on the back of it, I can when I get ready to embroider. But I'm not super upset about this. Now, for my placement guide, I'm going to use the pictures of the chickens. Gotta find them in my little book. My chicky pictures. And we are doing Hattie today. Hattie is in the upper right, right here. And I'm going to use the picture as a guide to lay out my block. So the way they have this is Patty is somewhat in the middle of the block. And this is cut at 14 inches. Yep, cut 14 by 14. The block finishes at 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So I want to make sure that I don't go too close to the edges. But I am going to set all of my little pieces up on here. Here's the waddle for the chicken. Here's her comb, which goes underneath. 
And then we have the baby chick that goes here. And the baby chick's wing goes here. Now there's a couple of items missing on here. In the picture, it shows a red eye right here. And it shows a little piece of wattle here. And it's made out of bias tape. So I have a little piece of bias tape here. Or excuse me, not a little piece of bias tape. I have a little piece of pink fabric that I want to use for that thing. And I've got some left over from this other one, so I'll just use that. What I want to do is I want to fold it in half, fold it in half, and then fold it over this way. And I want to put an iron to that real quickly, just so that I can put it into place. I'm going to sew over here at my sewing machine. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to sew down both sides of this little tape. This is a great quilt to use the scraps on. Because nothing goes to waste. All right, so now I'm trimming off the ends of the tape just so that that's out of the way. And then I'm going to cut a little thin piece of heat and bond. And I'm going to put it on the less pretty side. of my little bias tape that I made there. It's almost always an easier way to do this stuff. So I'm always looking for what's the easier way. Okay, <clears throat> so now that I've got that little piece of heat and bond put on the back of that, I'm gonna figure out how I want my beak to look. And I need about a half an inch piece, maybe an inch right there. I'm going to use my little rotary cutter to cut myself two one inch pieces. Close my cutter. And then I'm going to look back at my picture. My little chicken has, or my big chicken, has got her mouth open. So right there is her beak. And the little guy needs a beak too. I think what I'm gonna do with him is I'm gonna cut it open a little bit and then cut those two little pieces off. Because his beak doesn't need to be as big as the mommy chickens. And that's gonna go here. And here, under the chicken. Okay, so now that I have everything laid out, I'm gonna look, and I think that the chicken's a little high, so I'm gonna slide it down here. I could just use my 12 and a half inch ruler to um, help slide things around if that's what I wanna do. And baby chicken is supposed to be standing on mommy's back. So now that I've got this all kind of where I want it, I want to start peeling off the back of my bias tape and putting things down where they go. Or my not my bias tape. I want to start peeling off the back of my heat and bond and laying them back down where they go. So there's my beak. There's the other part of my beak. And notice that I'm starting with the items that are on the very bottom. The wattle, the beak, the comb, anything that goes underneath, I'm going to go ahead and peel the paper from. 
and put that down. Make sure it's where I want it. And Hattie's wearing her comb a little more like a hairstyle than like a comb. We're going to put it right there. And while I'm over here, I'm going to peel off the paper from the back of the baby chick's beak from both sides of it and put that down here. I'm going to move the baby chick's wing off of him. And then I'm going to peel baby chickie's backing so that we can apply this and put the chickie back down. Make sure it's where I want it. And I'm going to be brave and try to do three layers at a time. Let's see, chickie's wing goes kind of like that. And here comes our iron. Now, you don't want to move this iron. You just want to set it down. And you want to set it down and let it sit there for a few seconds. Um, because this is applique and it's going to get sewed on, I'm not super worried about it moving. But you don't, when you set your iron down, you don't want to move the pieces that you're ironing down. You just want to set it down. I'm applying a little bit of pressure. And then I'm going to pick it up and everything is attached. That's what I wanted. Now I'm going to attach the big chicken. I'm not going to move her a long way from where she's supposed to be. I'm just going to take the paper off the back. If you have a hard time starting this paper, a pen, like a straight pen, is a great starter. And let's see, make sure we've got her straight, not crooked. And that she's up here far enough to cover the beak and to be over the call. So everybody's there. And I'm gonna go ahead and iron her down. There's a couple more pieces that still need to go in here. But I wanna get the big piece down first. And I am lifting up my iron, even though it kind of looks like I'm sliding it. I just saw it on camera and thought, oh, that doesn't look good. Now, all my other pieces are out of the way of the iron. I know I still have to apply them. And every time I go back in with the iron, I just give the other little sections a little tiny press. Okay, and now we're going to come to our wing and our waddle. For Hattie, the waddle starts just underneath her beak. So I'm going to put this right here. And it's turned just a little bit. So that she's like that. Then I'm going to peel off the back of the wing. And the wing goes like this. Maybe do move her waddle up a little bit. This is all kind of how do you want it to look? You know, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Maybe a little more angle on that. I don't want it over the waddle. Okay, so that's the wing and the waddle. Again, set the iron straight down. Don't move anything. While you let the iron sit there for a second, you can gather up the little flotsam and jetsam garbage and throw it away. I'm going to let this cool off for just a minute. And once it's cooled off, I'm going to use my friction pen to make a couple of markings on here. 
Um, there is some minor embroidery to do on this and a whole bunch of, of uh, applique stitching around it. I'm going to do it on my Baby Lock Jazz. I'm going to do the applique stitching. I haven't decided yet what color I'm going to use. I know that I am not going to change colors between every element of this block because that's not how I roll. <laughs> Still a little warm. I'm just waiting for it to cool down. Okay. I'm using a friction pen, so this is not a permanent mark. But what I'm looking for is where does my eye go? And according to the picture, the eye goes right here, just above the beak and in just a little bit. And then the baby chickie gets an eye just above the beak and in a little bit. And the reason I'm marking this with the friction pen is so that once I actually sew the eyes in here, it'll iron away. And then the other thing that I'm supposed to do is my little chickie has got legs coming down to show that he's standing on mommy's back. I want to draw those legs in so that I remember to stitch them in. I'm giving myself a little room there because I know I'm going to be doing a zigzag stitch around this and that's that uh, leg won't show if I put it all the way down to the back. And then mommy chicken gets legs. And since we did her beaks out of this, we're going to do her legs out of this piece as well. And her legs are two straight pieces and then three pieces that go different directions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold this over just like we did for the beak. I'm going to fold this over <clears throat> in half and in half again. And I'm going to iron it. I'm just giving it a finger press so that it'll stay where I want. I'm going to take my iron and go right down this side. Once again, I'm not super worried on this part about having it underneath the bottom edge of my chicken because it's going to get, the chicken is going to get stitched all the way around. And once I stitch all the way around the chicken, then it will cover the top edge of this. We're gonna put a quick little seam, a quick little stitch down the sides of this piece so that I can make my feet for my chicken. I don't know why I always want to sound Cajun when I say chicken. I think it's because of this guy I used to watch when I was a kid, Justin. Justin something. Who was a Cajun chef. And everything was chicken. Now, when Lori does this, she has you do it with a, um, that is the prettier side. She has you do it with a bias tape maker and all this. I am not getting out a bias tape maker to make 10 inches of folded over fabric. So we're back to the heat and bond, as you can see. And the heat and bond light is not, excuse me, the heat and bond light is not going to hold this on here permanently. It's supposed to, but if your quilt gets washed a lot or if it gets drug around, it's not going to stay like that. So, and it's an applique quilt anyway. The whole point is to do the applique. All I'm doing is working on the piecing 
so I can get to the stitching, which is what I want to do. I don't care about cutting out 4 million little pieces of fabric or this, that, and the other. So now what I'm going to do is she's going to get stubby legs. They're going to be about that long. And I'm going to put them right there. And then these are going to be the pieces of her feet. I'm going to do them. Like that, one's a little longer, and these are in half. So the leg part's on right here. So I'm gonna put that on and use my iron. Right now, my favorite tool is my iron. That goes on, and then we're going to put the feet parts. I cut two of them just a little bit longer than everything else. I did that one. Because her feet go out like this. And then you've already lost your little back piece, haven't you? Not like that. And I know I'm getting close to that bottom edge, but when I square up my 12 and a half inch, it will work fine. And this is my quilt and I can take artistic license if I like, right? All right, so she's got her feet. And let's glue that down. And I am putting pressure on my iron while I put her feet down here. All of my little garbage is right there. I still have two little toes. If I think she needs them, I will put them on. And if they want to give you a hard time about staying, which that one is, my other secret weapon, Elmer's glue. I'll put a little bit down on the bottom of this toe, foot, whatever you call it. Got to get it all the way open. Don't you love it? Now may I have a little glue, please? My glue does not want to stay. So we're going to improvise. Get the garbage off of here. Grab a pen. 
I'm going to put this pen down where I want it to be. And when I take it to the baby lock or to the sewing machine, I will do that section first and make sure that it gets sewed down. Okay, so that's the end of this section for this. My next video will show you how to um, applique this on basically a regular sewing machine, which is what a baby lock jazz is, using either the um, using either the zigzag stitch on there or any of the specialty stitches. Um, I'll show you zigzag stitch and I'll show you the satin stitch on my machine so you can see which one you like better or you can experiment on yours. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching and I appreciate you being here today. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys again on the next video. Bye-bye.